Making Monsters, Exploring Monsters Through Clay. Lesson one, we're gonna start out with icebreakers. The key concepts and vocabulary should be brought up. This is a great way to start off the year because you can get to know the students while they get to know you and the subject. And you're gonna end off the day playing a couple games. You're gonna need a projector, writing utensils, and if you're working with high school or maybe even middle school, you'll need a sketchbook. But if you're working with younger than that, you'll probably just use scrap paper from the class. Now first off, what are monsters? What provokes or motivates them? What do they look like? What are their strengths and weaknesses? What are their fears? What just makes them tick? We saw that last word provoke. We want to start that out as part of our language function. What does it mean to be provoked? How is it different from cause and effect? We want to have all our students write this down, write down some of the examples, and discuss it. If you notice, I've included the word in English and Spanish, and if you want to include that in the definition and examples, please make sure the text is big enough. Sometimes when we add it and project it, the students can't see it. So if we're thinking about what provokes things, this is a good example to start. I show this to the class and ask how King Kong is being provoked. Of course, he's being shot at by a plane, but when we get more in depth, we talk about how he's wearing chains, he doesn't live in the city normally, he's just out of his element. How does that relate to other monsters? Monsters have characteristics. Some of them are scary, some of them are creepy, some of them are friendly, some of them are cute. So discuss with your class the differences between monsters, even when they're almost the same. When the class goes through the color, the texture, things like this, they're going to start to notice what it is about them that makes them scary or not, and however they design their monster, they'll be able to have a little more control over it. From the 90s and the 70s, the Muppets look very different, even though some of these are the same characters. Cookie Monster is a good way to discuss how being provoked or motivated affects a monster, especially if you're working with a young group of students that you don't want to scare. But if you're working with an older group of students, you can talk about monsters from old movies and how they might relate to Hotel Transylvania. People don't find them scary because they're in cartoon form. So ask kids why and see what conclusions they come to. Monsters are also different from different cultures. These are Sesame Street monsters from Nigeria and Israel. That's Yam Monster and Moisha Ufnik, Oscar's cousin. In other cultures, oftentimes monsters have misconceptions about them. For instance, these are Haitian spirits of protection. They're sculptures that were in the voodoo exhibit at the Field Museum, and they're there to be your helper and protector against evil spirits. But when you ask students what they are, they often say demons or devils. When I was a kid, I always wondered why they would want to scare off these monsters, because wouldn't they be friends? But really, if you were going to go down a dark alley in a bad neighborhood in the middle of the night, you'd probably want one of these guys, or one of these guys. They're there to help. Now, when we talk about monsters, there's of course Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, legendary monsters. We want to ask the students what they think. Do they stem from reality? Do they believe they could exist? There's different monsters for each culture, so consider who the population is in your classroom and try to adjust so you're actually addressing something that relates to them. Where do some legends about monsters come from? Now this I would only include in high school. Students discuss what they think this monster is, some kind of mutant, some kind of creature from a comic book, and then I show them the actual answer. This is from a Nazi propaganda magazine depicting Jewish people and relating them to rats. I want students of an older age to understand how things like dehumanization happen and how it's used to turn people into animals or monsters, making it easy for other people to do terrible things to them. I think even though this is a hard lesson to learn, it's important for students to understand when people are being referred to as animals or beasts that this is what's happening. Can making monsters help us with our fears? Monsters fear losing time, losing things, changing. When we want to think through monsters, it's going to help us have an understanding of a narrative or a story that we can create that gives our monster more than just a cute design. It gives him a reason for looking how it looks. It gives him a backstory. 
So now that you've gone over key concepts, vocabulary, had some discussions, have a basic understanding of what monsters are and what your students feel about them or know about them, you're going to end the day with an icebreaker game called Four Corners. Divide your room into sections A, B, C, and D and post prompts on the projection screen to figure out how your students feel about different monsters and what interests them. This is going to help them think through the idea so that when they make their own monsters, they know what they really want to create. In this case, remember, tell students to keep their answers appropriate, or they won't, and the invisible man gets a little racy. There's a lot of different prompts you can put. Usually there's a little bit of extra time during the end of the day, but you don't want too much. So I'll go through three or four of these, but I always want to make sure I have extra in case half of your student population is out for that day. People could be sick or absent or anything. So think through what slides, what questions, what things you want to ask, and go through all this stuff with your students. And if you have extra time, you can come back to it. But now you've kind of got a basic understanding of what they know about monsters, what they want to know about monsters, and where you can take the lesson from there. So now that we've done slideshows and icebreaker activities, we've covered lesson one, icebreakers. We'll do worksheets, sketches, drawings, and other think through materials later to help us understand exactly what we wanna make out of clay. But now we have a basic understanding of what our students are interested in and what they already know about monsters. Check back in, thanks.